Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the scope. And now, here are your hosts, Jared, Adam, and Shane. Everybody, episode 181 of your scope program. Jared in the house, Shane in the house, Adam once again is he's a- missing. He's a wall. We we we've called in the yeah. special forces. We're not sure where he is. Yeah. He uh, just picked up. He took a knife. He walked out into the desert. Yeah. And uh, something about walkabout. Yeah. And wanting to slay a dingo. Yes. I don't think he's going to find it in the wilds of Minnesota. But how many Taliban would we have to trade for him? <laughs> I don't know. That's that's a good that's a good question. I mean, we don't want to leave any Americans behind. I think the Taliban would be like, eh, you can have him. Yeah. He's really not worth much. Yeah. He's not a high priority target for yeah. us. He's very uninterested in anything we have to say. And <laughs> frankly, we think we can do better. Yeah, so he, he's sort of dismissive of everything that uh, you know we're doing. We offer him food. Eh, he just doesn't He's not really into much of anything. I think the State Department would want to actually maybe empty Guantanamo to get him back just because they're tired of paying for Guantanamo. Yeah. Not because Adam has any intrinsic value in the trade market. No. And the Taliban would be like, "Eh, we don't even, he's asking for Minecraft or or Warcraft, World of Warcraft stuff. Yeah. We can't help him. All all he wants is, all he wants is mashups and remixes of popular (laughs) songs to listen to. We can't help him there because we've really only got this one Bee Gees cassette. They love the Bee Gees. That's a known fact. I'm writing that down. (laughs) The Taliban loves the Bee Gees. Yeah. Night to Broadway. Can't help it. It's, it's infectious. <laughs> Gets in your brain. It's everywhere across the world, <laughs> living it up on the Night to Broadway. Jared, today we have an interesting show. We do. Uh, we are talking to a online toy vendor who vends... Is that, li- is that how you use it? He vends classic vintage toys. Yes. And he exists only on the internet. Yeah. He's not a real physical person. He, fact. He's like a robot. Yeah, he's a robot. Yep. It's sort of sad. In cyberspace. It's sort of sad now, Jared, that the toys that you and I played with are considered vintage, and in some cases, well, yeah, in some cases they're older than vintage. Where does vintage start? I don't. For some, for people nowadays, like people that matter, you know, yeah. probably the, the kids in the twenties and thirties, or kids of the age of in the twenties and thirties, vintage is probably early nineties. <laughs> I know, and I didn't really play with toys in the early nineties. Damn, damn millennials. I know. They're ruining everything. So yes, uh, we're talking uh, to Gino from Nerd, Ra- Nerd Rage Toys. It's a guy that uh, uh, knows his business. He's a Or lot of, does he? Or does he? He's a lot of fun to talk to, and uh, he strikes a good deal for people of of. Uh, I plan interest. to get rich. So there we go. Uh, very, very exciting show. So mm-hmm. and it's going to be Jared and me, no Adam. So, Jared, let's stop with all this talking because this people, tomfoolery. people want to know what's going on in the world of vintage toys. So we'll take a quick break. Mm-hmm. We'll come back with uh, Gino from Nerd Rage Toys, and uh, we'll put him through his paces. So uh, please, everybody, stick around. More scope coming right after this. This is the Fump. There's an app, there's an app, there's an app for that. Download them for a dollar in nothing flat. Whatever you need, you know it's guaranteed. There's an app, there's an app for that. There's an app, there's an app for that. Joker Black Mask and the Penguin, Batman Arkham Origins. Oh hey look, prequel time again. It's not exactly Batman Begins. Joker Black Mask and the Penguin, Batman Arkham Origins. What to see did you suppose? Hell babes taking off their clothes. I want to see some of those. Let's watch ladies decompose. There's swinging music playing, there's dripping and decaying. If you know what I'm saying, it's Satan's burlesque. Oh, That's the Funny Music Project at thefump.com. T-H-E-F-U-M-P dot com. Everybody, it's Jared and Shane of uh, with the scope. We are talking to uh, Gino from Nerd Rage Toys. Um, everybody knows I'm a big fan of toys, and they look down on me because I'm probably too old for that, right, Jared? <laughs> uh, constantly, constantly, yeah. 
Um, Gino's a guy that uh, he runs a he runs an online joint called uh, Nerd Rage Toys. I've full disclosure, I've done uh, business with him. I've purchased from him. I've sold to him. Uh, I find him and uh, Nerd Rage Toys to be a really fair, cool place. They cover a lot of toys uh, that uh, would be of interest to me because uh, I was a child of the '80s, and uh, Gino covers a lot of that. He also covers a lot of '90s toys and new toys. Gino, thank you for being on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's a very, very exciting to have you. We've, Jared, we've been trying to make this happen for months now, uh, but with the scope, there's so much breaking news. There's so much stuff yes. that we have to cover what the world dishes out to us. So whether it's uh, the issues in Ukraine or um, a tree falling on my house, uh, we will talk about that. Honestly, we just wanted to wait for when, a week when Adam wasn't here. Yeah. Yeah, Gino, we normally have a third guy here, Adam. Uh, most of the time he shows up, but for whatever reason, he's not here today. Uh, and we did not want him to assault you in in terrible ways because he treats our guests terribly. So <laughs> oh, that's fine. I'm used to it. <laughs> so why don't uh, why don't you tell me about how you kind of got into the uh, the toy selling business? Give me a little bit of your background and how Nerd Rage Toys uh, started out. Sure. Um, probably for the last decade or so, I've been real big into collecting, um, doing buying big lots, piecing together sure. my collection, reselling them on eBay and whatnot. And uh, eventually I just got sick of having a boss and I said, you know, let's try to get this into a business and yeah. make it profitable. So and, do you, uh, it, it all worked out. Is this your, is this your only job? Or do you have a day job or is this uh, no, no, wow. I took on this full time last year, uh, last October and uh, it's been doing very well since. Great. Hey, Jared, I need to pause for one second. I'm sorry. I'm getting an emergency call. Okay. Sorry, Gino. That's all right. Hey, if I want to step away, I can hear uh, doing the show right now. Yeah. Nope, nope, nope. Got a few hours. <laughs> okay, <laughs> bye bye. No, it is it is not. Okay, bye bye. I thank you for having the courtesy to do that near the beginning, so it's much easier for yeah. me to find the Why don't we just point. keep that? We'll just keep it right in the show. Yeah, it's Sometimes great. my wife calls and demands to know where I'm at. She doesn't know oh, where you are. I understand. She has, she has no idea. She goes, I thought that was tomorrow. So there you go. Anyways. Yeah, I'm, waiting, I'm waiting for mine to walk in the door any time and scream at me, so... <laughs> Well, I we think might be so, interrupted. So our love, our love of to get this done. <laughs> our, lo our love of toys and abusive wives are another thing that bonds us together. I love it. Exactly. So, uh, so you were saying you started doing this full time about a year ago. Yep. Uh, and uh, it's got to be satisfying, sort of following something that you know. Is obviously, it's it's something that's important and almost like a dream. I mean, for me to run my own toy business as my as my uh, only source of income and kind of doing it my way would be a lot of fun. I would think. Oh yeah, it's. You know, being able to do things the way you want, not having somebody over you that is stupid, <laughs> telling you <laughs> telling you how to do things wrong. You basically you have full control and you can do anything. You know, I can go to the beach on a Thursday at noon, or I can sleep until one, and I got no one telling me I'm doing the wrong thing. So, did you have when you started this out? Um, did you talk to other people that did this, or did you kind of have to learn on your own? You know the the pitfalls and uh, the the stuff that can get you into trouble when you're starting your own business. Oh, it was a very big learning experience. But you know, as a collector myself, I've done the trials and tribulations of buying, selling, getting ripped off. Uh, you know, knowing what buyers want sure. when it comes to toys and stuff. But the business as aspect and the technical aspect of getting a website that works and designing it for ease of use and all that. That was a lot of trial and error and reading a lot of books sure. on how to, how to do all that. So did you design the site yourself or did you hire out to do someone? I'm just curious. No, I that. actually designed it all myself. Nice. Um, the only thing that I haven't done on there was the back-end software for you know the shopping cart and everything. That sure. is beyond my technical expertise. I'm pulling up your website right now. I'm going to judge you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> both, I'm kidding. Both Jared and I sort of, it's interesting, uh, we do exactly what uh, you did with your website, so... We have uh, we have vested interest to make sure that everything is great. So, <laughs> so yeah, you know, it's it's trial and error. Yeah, that, yep. it all going. Yeah, I mean that's the thing about uh, building websites is anybody can do it. It's just figuring out uh, what's best for your customer and and making sure that things run smoothly. So yeah. So when you started out, um, I don't know. It's been you've been doing this for a few years. What's what's different from uh, 
when you started to now? Like, wh- what are some of the things that you've learned that um, maybe painfully some lessons that you've learned uh, over the time uh, from uh, beginning to current day? Oh, the shipping issues. Yeah. Um, those can make or break you. And getting like a real accurate shipping calculator, making sure all that stuff is taken care of. That's that was a big part of uh you know, getting everything set up because sure. You know, if I charge someone five bucks for shipping by accident and it cost me thirty five dollars to ship it, oh. and they only bought a fifty dollar item, yeah, there goes your profit. You know, that'll put you right in the pits right there. So getting all that going, uh, basically just the whole design of the website. I don't know how far back you guys have been visiting my site, but when I first started, it was basically just a blog roll. Like you yeah. couldn't even tell that there was anything for sale on there because. You know, I had no idea how to get everything in order. Sure. So I kind of just dove into the deep end, opened it up, and then went and designed it as I went. Well, I've been looking at it since about three minutes ago, and not <laughs> much has changed. So you might yeah, want to. Yeah, no, you might want to get updated. stable now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I remember remember the the concept of nerd nerd rage toys. It was mentioned like in some GI Joe uh, websites or something. Like you maybe you you partnered with them or something like that. That's when I first remember it and I went and checked it out. So yeah, no, I was big in the, in the forum community for okay. a long time. So once I first started out, you know, I did have a lot of help getting my name out there, which sure. was good. So, so how did you come up with the name nerd rage choice? What's the origin of that? That actually spawned when uh, G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra came out. Ah, uh, yes. I was big into <laughs> G.I. Joe's right on the tail end of the 25th anniversary line and all sure. that stuff. And uh, I was big in the forums. And once they started releasing the you know the first look at the, the Rise of Cobra, the way the, the figures look, the way the characters look, it was like uh, the apocalypse for G.I. Joe. <laughs> this <laughs> so is not felt. right. And, what do you mean? You, you, know, didn't, you didn't like the Cobra Commander design? I mean, give me a break. Oh, man. <laughs> you don't love speed suits? Come on. Everybody's everybody's yeah. in the same the same outfit. Everybody looks the same. There's no distinction between the characters like the original, you know? Yeah, yeah. So that's that's when I started seeing the name pop up, Nerd Rage, a lot. Oh, everybody had the <laughs> Nerd Rage. And I was like, wow, Nerd Rage Toys. Maybe I'll, I'll name a store that one day. Maybe that's going to be our true apocalypse scenario. It's not going to be some sort of virus or zombieism. It's just going to be nerd, nerd Rage infecting people across the country. Yeah, exactly. Event- eventually it gets everyone. So you talk about, I mean, you do a lot of business with, uh, you buy, you know, you'll, you'll get new toys and resell them, obviously. But you, yep. the majority of your business is, is vintage stuff. How do you yeah. how do you get all of this stuff? Because uh, I want to steal that idea and build my own store called Geek Rage Toys, and I need to know all of your secrets. Yeah, you know, I <laughs> just try to go down every avenue I can. I, yeah, eBay's eBay's a huge help. You know, I have people that contact me that want to sell me stuff. I'm actively looking for things. Uh, you know, I do conventions and whatnot, sure. and I have people approach me saying, "Hey, I got a a room of old junk that I want to sell you," and you know, go check it out and. If it's good, it's good. If not, whatever. You do like do you do like garage sales and estate sales, or is that uh, you know, is that tougher? I to... haven't had luck with garage sales yeah. for probably fifteen years. Sure. Now. You know, once I was a young teen, that's when all the '80s and '70s kids were moving out of the house, yeah. and people like my age were getting into high school and don't want the girls to know we play with toys. So you could go to a garage sale and and just score some awesome stuff. But now it's like. You get baby toys and cribs and stuff, and Every, everybody <laughs> seems to know that you know that's a way to do it. So even if uh, people are selling that stuff in garage sales, they're usually gone before people like us could get to it. Yeah, I mean, I've done some garage sale, and usually all I find are Nintendo games and yeah. some old junk figures, if anything. That's yeah. about it. So, oh, a quick question ahead, about like, so if you have come across an estate or something that has a bunch of stuff. And uh, there happens to be maybe a toy line that you're unfamiliar with. Do you are you like Pawn Stars, where you have like a team of experts that can come in at a moment's <laughs> notice to appraise them? I do have a couple people that I can refer to if need be. But Shane, basically, you think, I'm, you think I'm cracking jokes, but I'm asking hard hitting questions. I think here. you're cracking jokes, but well, no, basically, <laughs> I, you know, it's funny you guys say that because whenever I go out to buy somebody's stuff, it's always the Pawn Stars feel where sure. they expect me to be like, well, there's not a big customer base for this, so I can only give you five bucks. Are, are they <laughs> that, ever like? That, are they were like, I looked this up and it sold at auction for I X have, amount of dollars. I, I did. Um, 
I did a uh, free comic book day convention uh, a couple weeks ago, whenever that was, and uh, I had one figure that was priced at two hundred dollars, basically fifty dollars cheaper than what it sells for on eBay. Just trying to get rid of it. Yeah. And I had one guy come up to me and he's like, "I watch Toy Hunter, so I know what that oh I know what that God. figure's worth. I know what it should sell for. I'm not paying for that." Mm. So you get a lot of that now that those shows are mainstream and everybody people are too informed. Know, Let's talk about yeah. let's talk about Toy Hunters for a second. Is that show not a joke or what? You know, I watch it just to see the locations, just sure. to see where he goes. I mean, when he he go to uh, what was that like Lee's Toy Review, yeah, uh, magazine warehouse he went to. You know, you don't get to see that kind of yeah. stuff, uh, you know, other than just looking at pictures on the internet. But yeah, I mean. It's all scripted. Yeah. It's all, all it, those shows it, are scripted. It's fun to see, uh, you know, the the stuff that they pull up, and it's like, wow, you know, on a on a cable television show, you can see someone talking seriously about Silverhawks action figures or something. <laughs> you know, that's kind of cool to see. It's interesting with that show that you can get these odd toy lines that get coverage um, that mean something to you or me, but my wife will see it and, and doesn't really care. So it's kind of fun yeah. to see that on TV, but the fact of the matter is, it's it's a very very limited uh, range for the for uh, the viewership. I think in terms of yeah, it it's meaning. a total niche viewer for sure. Yeah, uh, I know. I don't know what the ratings demographic is on that show, but you know, it's not for everyone. Yeah, I think it's for us. So hey, why not? I, cable TV is so segmented anyway that maybe uh, maybe it's enough. So yeah. Um. So. Uh, we t- we've talked about how you get the toys. You talked about your business. You talked about some of the pitfalls. But I'm curious about um, the worst customer you've ever had or worst customer experience. You talk about people ripping you off. Um, has that yeah. happened a lot with Nerd Rage toys, or is that more like pre? pre- On the website itself, I've only really had one problem yeah. with anybody, and that was when I first started off. Everything else that I've ever dealt with is on eBay. Uh, eBay reminds me of. When Obi Wan starts talking about uh, Mos Eisley, yeah. and he says it's the you know <laughs> yeah, the wretched mo- hive of scum and villainy. Yes, I mean that that sums up eBay in a nutshell. We must be cautious. <laughs> Very much. nice, Jared. Um, yeah, yeah. I've. What about you, Jared? Have you ever had any bad? You do a lot of eBay work. I I buy rarely from eBay, um, so I really haven't had an issue with someone screwed me over. What about you? Uh, nothing toy related, but I have had a couple of things where I've had to contact the seller and try to get some recompense or have them fix it like i've had i bought a used computer a few years back and it arrived at my door completely smashed really yeah, yeah. um so that <laughs> was fun thing i've ever had problems with on ebay is either transformers or any kind of electronics there you go uh, yeah re- recently i was selling a uh was it the 25th anniversary optimus prime figure mm-hmm. and i had one guy he bought it and then after he paid for it claimed that i changed the shipping cost on him yeah. somehow after he already paid and then he he filed this claim and it got all hairy like before i even shipped out the package luckily wow so i was able to get it all canceled and then once i relisted it within five minutes another name from the same exact address <laughs> bought it again <laughs> <laughs> and issued a chargeback on his credit card immediately really which luckily paypal notifies you of so he bought it and then charged back and then PayPal took the money away from me. And it was just like another battle trying to get that all situated out and it's stuff like that. A psychopathic a-hole. There you go. Exactly. You know, eBay, eBay started out really uh, decent to sell with after a couple of years of getting everything sorted out. But now they basically take someone's yard sale and force you to adhere to big box customer service standards. Sure. You know, like you could sell a, a tea cl- teacup on there and they force you to have like a 40 day money back guarantee on it. And, you know, it, it just gets a little crazy sometimes. Yeah. Do you have any tips? I have I happen to have boxes full of carded action figures that I collected during our uh, our uh, our stint at Toys R Us back in the 90s. Are there any you have sure. any tips on on how to actually sell those on eBay successfully? Or should I not even bother? (laughs) If it's like Power of the Force 2 figures, you probably should just grind those up and make your own own paper out of them, you know? Okay. Something. Jared and I could have an entire show with you on it. We could just tell you about our Toys R Us days because that's actually how we met. Well, I think Um, what we would do is we would probably just take out our our toys we want to sell and have you appraise them. Yeah. (laughs) I worked at Toys R Us myself, so I know how it is there. 
Did you work security? Because that was my favorite. Uh... No, I never worked <laughs> security. I was in charge of electronics. Okay. Well, that was that was a lot of fun. The good old days. So, any tips for poor Jared? He, what do you got, Jared? You've got tons of X Men action figures. You've got, got a, Power I've, Rangers. I've got a lot of garbage, but I think I have probably some gems. I do have some like original Power Rangers, you know, in the triangle boxes. Um, yeah, the Power Rangers are huge right now. Yeah, I need um, to sell those. There's, there's talk of a new movie. There's the the uh, they just put out all the new the DVD box sets and everything. Nice. So that's a good good time to sell those uh, X Men. Not so much. Yeah. I mean, you might be able to put them together in a huge lot, and depending on how many you get, probably a buck or two a figure out of them. Yeah, that's sort of the decision I I, I have to make is like, do I sell these individually or do I sell them in lots? So. Yeah, that that's the tough thing about those lines is those are more of like a, a just a keepsake for nostalgia's sake, you know? Sure. Resale is not very great. Jared may have that X Men figure hanging up right to your right, right behind you, as a matter of fact. Which one? Yeah, I, I, I can't I can't tell. There's a glare on it. What do we got? <laughs> Oh, it's random. God. Random. I don't know if I have that he, one. All random does is make waves in the Marvel Universe, even today, Jared. Yeah, everybody knows about him. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why he's still up on my peg. Right there. <laughs> so, um, Jared, you're going to be doing a lot of Power Rangers selling. It, it's interesting how Power Rangers, he bought them at the height of their popularity, yes. popularity and then you have to wait. 20 years yeah, for okay. them to come back. I put them in a box, and, and now, it's, now I could reap the benefits. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. If you want to get rid of your Power Rangers, give me a call. <laughs> ah, I do have a, uh, what it might be a sort of a limited piece. I have like the, the black and gold Megazord. Yes. You know, I've always wanted to get my hands on that for my personal collection. Oh, so we might have to have a little conversation. Might have a fire. <laughs> <laughs> and I also have a Dragon Zord. So. Yeah. It's, it's interesting because uh, when Jared and I, you know, we met in the early 90s, but, you know, and I think you can relate to this, you know, is the, the fact that at that time, everybody was savvy enough to think, ah, you know, if I do some collecting, this stuff is going to be worth a lot, you know, so everybody ha had a lot of this stuff in package, you know, you talk about the power of the force, you know, yeah. even if we would have been collecting five to ten years prior to that, that's mm -hmm. when you probably could have made a lot of money by keeping things in package, but, you know, in those days, you know, when you were a kid or when I was uh, a teenager, um, you know, people played with their toys, they just keep, yeah. it, keep it in the box, it didn't really... It really wasn't a thing, so... I don't know what you're yeah, talking like about, Shane. I know the, those 98-cent Cadillacs and dinosaur figures I bought are going to pay off <laughs> one day. <laughs> yeah, the mid-90s really changed collecting altogether just because of the introduction of eBay. Sure. I mean, before that, it was like you get in a phone book and you look up all the secondhand stores in your area yep. and hope that you have enough gas or your mom will drive you around to all of them one day, and you might be able to pick up some good stuff here and there. You know, eBay comes around and now you have the availability of anything you ever wanted yep. from anywhere in the world. And, you know, that was like the boom with Beanie Babies and sure. stuff was people in other countries couldn't get them. They were more scarce in one city than the next. Uh, so you had this huge boom of, of everything and, and you saw all the vintage figures going. I remember watching the uh, original like 1977 Star Wars on eBay go for upwards of five, six, seven, ten grand wow. during like 96, 97. So then Power of the Force 2 comes out and it's, you know, every people are fighting in the aisles to yeah. get that stuff. They certainly were. Yeah, we were helping them fight. <laughs> yeah, so I, I was there. I, my, I remember going, trying to get real early in the morning, trying to get the Leia, which looked like a dog, you know. <laughs> that, that was hard to get back then and now you can't give it away. Yep. Princess Leia, C-3PO, oh, oh yes. Exactly. What about a long saber Luke Skywalker? Oh, yeah, you get the long saber with the with the short the short saber card. That's in, like in, the weird, like, in transitional one that's kind of the rarest one, isn't it? Yeah, I mean... The and it's still only worth a dollar. <laughs> yeah, if you're lucky. Dang it, economies <laughs> of scale, I hate them. <laughs> if you're lucky. So... So why don't we uh, let's let's take this away from commerce and let's talk about nostalgia because uh, that's what I do business in. Um, sure. Tell me about your your first toy memory. Like what do you remember the like the, maybe the first toy that kind of uh, got you interested in this whole world? Because I me personally, I have a very specific memory, and I'll I'll let you think about what yours is, and I'll t I'll talk about mine first because I'm a very egocentric kind of guy. Sure. But, you know, you said you were born in 80, 83. 83. So I was born in 74. And uh, my, all of my first memories, uh, with the exception of being about a year and a half, two years old and being in a tornado, for some reason, I remember that. But 
all my memories were Star Wars related. It's just because it yeah. was such a huge thing back in those days. Mm -hmm. And I remember it, it, this had to be like 1978 because I don't I don't think the Star Wars figures were that um, available if they were at all in the 70 or late 77. No, well they had the Christmas pack where you yep. could buy the thing for Christmas and then mail away and get your figures delivered in the next year. You get the early version. Sure, right? yeah, and I I, I mean yes. that was well beyond a three year old at that time. But I remember my mom taking me and my cousin to Target, which uh, you're out in Maine, right? Yep. So I, I don't know how much of a present Target has out there, but Target's always been a presence here in Minnesota, you know, just because yeah. it's a Minnesota company. It's just always been around. So a lot yep. of my memories revolve around being in the Target toy lanes. But going and at the time, like the house, like the, the home improvement stuff was right next to the, the toy aisle. So mm -hmm. I remember walking through the paint aisle and they had Glidden paint cans. And at those times... The cans were like a metallic colored, so you'd have like metallic, the, the can itself would have like a metallic purple or metallic blue or metallic green. And I remember those cans and then walking over to the next aisle and just seeing Star Wars action figures from floor to ceiling, at least at yeah. a three-year-old, that's what it looked like. And they used to peg things differently back in those days too, I, it, especially like in our early days at Toys R Us, you'd have pegs of figures so high that even a, you know, a six foot tall person would have trouble getting them. But yeah. I remember having the pick of the litter, and I picked R two D two as my first action figure. My cousin picked Darth Vader, and then from there we went off to I don't know why, but pretty close to that same day or the next day we went off to Labelle's, and I don't know if you had them there, but there, it was like a catalog store, like service merchandise, where oh yeah, you know you'd go in and you know half the merchandise would be in the back, so you'd go and you'd fill out a form and yeah, everything was behind glass yeah, or something that yeah. you wanted to see, and then you'd wait at this little like counter, and there's this conveyor belt that would just yeah. it would come out, and so we went to that place and we both got a land speeder. Which is odd because R two D two can't really drive it, and Darth, hangs out on the back. And, and Darth Vader would never be in a land speeder. <laughs> but that right there, that was sort of the moment that solidified my. I don't even think I saw the Star Wars movie at that point. Um, I think I saw it shortly after that. But from there, my life was about Star Wars. It was about toys. It was about comic books and any sort of geeky nerdy thing. And it's for yeah. being like three years old or two and a half. That's I think that's a pretty powerful image. Yeah. So no, what about I... what about you? Yeah, you know, it's funny when you presented me with that question because I'd been doing a lot of searching uh, a couple of months ago, trying to put together a collection of all the oddball things I had as a kid. Yeah. And uh, one of the things I remember the most vividly, I couldn't have been any more than one years old or so. It was the uh, GoBots row gun. I don't know if you guys remember that. I know GoBots, little... but I don't know what a row gun is. Like, actually, I got it right here. Oh, oh yes, here. I remember that thing. And he turns transforms into a double barreled shotgun that shoots caps. Perfect for a one year old. <laughs> you know, and he's got this nice little handle that's placed really yeah. oddly. Uh, <laughs> you know, one of those kind of obscure things you'd get a kid, but yeah. I remember this vividly, my mom buying me the caps for it and uh shooting it off and everything. Yeah. So that was that was one of those things I had to pick up for my oddball collection. Yeah. So what about you, Jared? Do you have a, a toy memory? I'm like you. I, I was all about Star Wars uh, early, early on. I didn't get a lot of first movie Star Wars toys, though. I A lot of my toy memories are Empire Strikes Back, babe. Sure. Uh, so I, one of my favorites was Han Solo in the uh, uh, Hoth outfit. Sure. And I have a very distinct memory of having it up at my grandma's house in winter, and we were playing it with it out in the snow, and for some reason, I, I lost it. He was gone. He was just he was washed up. away in the in the snows of Hoth. Searching for wampus. And I recall the next spring, we found it in the yard, all chewed up. The dogs had gotten to it, and poor Han Solo didn't fare too well. <laughs> <laughs> that figure was kind of cool because he actually had sort of that quasi-working holster. Yeah. Where you, was, could, you could sort of stick the gun into it, not really into it, it but it was just sort of sitting yeah, on the side. Yeah, I don't think that just was... Just kind of sit on top of it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It, it wasn't meant for that, I'm sure, but it yeah, worked. That's what you that did. was pretty cool. And I can recall that uh, we lost a number of Yodas playing with them out in the dirt. Yeah, I remember seeing Yoda in the store for the first time, and that was a very big deal because I don't—he was—I don't think he came out uh, in the first wave of those figures. So yeah. to see this tiny little Yoda character was, you know, 1981 or whenever it was, was pretty cool. There was yeah. a uh, there was like a mail away accessory pack yep. you could get that had backpacks and stuff like yep. that, and I remember mailing away for it, and I never got it. Oh, I remember that was disappointing. I remember getting it. It had like the you could have like a Hoth backpacks, yep. and you could have uh, like the grappling hook to the the ADAP. Yep, they had that. Yeah, that was a cool thing. Sorry, Jared. That's all right. 
So, and a little uh, sidebar as far as my Star Wars collecting. So, um, I grew up a Jehovah's Witness, as as listeners of the show know. Uh, not currently, haven't been for many, many years. But as a child, I was uh, I was part of it. And so, as a consequence of that, uh, I was not allowed to have any bad guys. So, it was all good guy Star Wars figures <laughs> for me. No Darth <laughs> Vader's, no Stormtroopers, nothing like that. The coolest looking ones you couldn't have. What about no. Boba Fett? Could you swing him as maybe just a questionable? Nope. Never got one. Wow. There was a time that sucks. Yeah, I know. There was a time uh, we actually uh, did it. My brother and I made a trade. My brother's a a year younger than me. Uh, We made a trade with some neighbor kids and we got like a Darth Vader and and, uh, I don't know, maybe we got a Boba Fett out of the deal. But as soon as my dad saw that, he made us go and take that trade back because we weren't supposed to have any bad guys. And now your house is full of Boba Fett action figures. Yeah, it's wall to wall. I got (laughs) to kick them out of the way when I get out of bed. It's it's a sickness. I'm I'm asking for help. Help, Yes. Help me. So let's talk about uh, uh, your favorite toy line ever, Gino. Sure. Let's. I mean, there's there's a a billion you could uh, you could be looking at tiger sharks. I'm sure everybody loves tiger sharks. Uh, yeah, if you could find the one figure that they produced of that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, I'm my guess is your your favorite line probably will not be vintage Star Wars, but it's got to be it's got to be something from your childhood, I would assume. You know, vintage Star Wars was my gateway drug into yep. collecting, but my all-time hands down is Ninja Turtles. Ah, uh, I got a couple first series carded ones. That might be interesting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Me the, too. Uh, the Ninja Turtles. I mean, if you really take them and and look at them, the detail that went into the actual sculpts of those, you know, that stuff goes unnoticed as a kid. But now that sure. you're older and you look at that kind of stuff, some of those figures had some amazing detail. Yeah. And you you got that was one of like the last lines where you really got the big giant play sets, the big giant vehicles True. that weren't absolute garbage. It wasn't like a piece of cardboard or, or just a big hunk of junk. I mean, moving parts, solid working vehicles that did all kinds of cool stuff. You know, I had real good memories of that. And luckily, most of all my Ninja Turtles I had as a kid made it through to my adult life. So. You, Still have them all. You weren't an idiot like uh, me where uh, the first year of my junior high uh, life, I decided I was going to sell all of my Transformers, yeah. all of my masks, all of my G.I. Joes in one year for garage sale. And then the next year, I sold all of my Star Wars. Uh, no, I did a oh, similar well, I thing hate when myself I was for that. 19. I broke up with a serious girlfriend and went into a, a funk and I threw away a lot of toys. So I know how that is. You that and I have right very... In the dumpster. Shane, you and I have very parallel lives in, in this respect because I, there was a phase... I must have been 13 or 14 yep. where I, I I was still into G.I. Joe heavy, and then I just decided, yeah, I should be done with this. And I just, yeah. had, we had a garage sale, and I had a big old display because I still had all the cards, so I, like, put the figures and all their accessories wow. in the Ziploc bags even more and, than me. and, like, recarded them and put them up, and I, I sold a ton of them there. But made a lot of money, yeah, but... Back in, and you probably maybe sold them a dollar figure or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I don't remember. Maybe less than that. But, I mean, in those days, you know, you make $100. $100 is like $500 today. So that's yeah. that's a lot of money for a kid. I, I, yeah. I did go through in the late 90s, and I went through a kind of a period where I was kind of binge buying classic G.I. Joe figures again. Yeah. So I have I have a box full of those somewhere. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't have had to do that if I just kept it all. Yes. Dummy. So, are you saying, Jared, that uh, GI Joe is your favorite toy line? You know, it might be. Yeah. There, I mean, there's there's the big three for me. There's Star Wars, mm-hmm. there's Transformers, and there's GI Joe. And I was really into Transformers for a few years, but I didn't stick with it for a long time. GI Joe was definitely the one where I I was into it for a number of years, and it hit me at a time where I had like a paper route, so I had money, my own money, to spend on it. So. Yeah. I had a yeah. lot of figures. I had a lot of toys or a lot like of vehicles. Dollar, dollar fifty a figure. Yeah. yeah. Then, you know. And so it was a time where, like, you know, like the third or fourth series would be out, but sometimes you can hit like a Montgomery Wards, and they'd still have some second series figures. Um, so I had a pretty good collection of GI Joe figures. That's probably my number one toy line. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I you know I thought about that question long and hard, and it's for me it it kind of goes in waves. I mean, it starts with Star Wars, but it's interesting because vintage Star Wars does not like from a nostalgia standpoint doesn't resonate with me like the next thing which caught my attention was GI Joe. I mean, I was I was into GI Joe for a number of years and if and I have like uh like with Gino, I was definitely into the the 25th anniversary line where I've got all those and so and I'd rather have those than the you know, than their earlier counterparts. I I just think they look cooler. Yeah. But th- yeah. but but then from then there was like there was a couple different smaller toy lines that really got my attention. I was 
big into Voltron. I was sort of that Japanese anime influx of stuff. I loved Voltron figures, but they were really, really expensive. You know, especially the good ones, not the not the yeah, the, the, the panache, nice panache place. Ones. Yeah, I, yeah. Did, I didn't like those. Yeah. That, back in those days, it was hard to create a a action figure of an anime type of character. Just the sculpting wasn't there. It just they didn't really understand. You know, toy companies yeah. didn't really understand how to capture that. And then uh, I was really into Mask, which I've actually purchased Mask stuff from you um, in yep. the past. I I just love the idea of these small little figures with these cool cars and vehicles that turn into other things. Uh, you know, you talk about good sculpting. I think that the Mask toys, yeah. in terms of quality, really hold up pretty well. Yeah, they were definitely premium quality. Yes, I love those things. I liked Mask quite a bit. I watched the cartoon a lot, um, but I only ever got like the what is it called, the Condor, the little green motorcycle. Yep. That's the only toy yeah. I I've, I've since gotten a couple more. But, you know, when they were in their prime, that's the only one I got for whatever reason. Yeah. I don't know. They didn't yeah, have a lot. That's the most iconic one. Yeah. Whenever Probably. you think about it, it's always the little green condor. And it's it, it was, was always it, the cheapest one, It too. was affordable to get. Yeah. And we didn't have a lot of money. So yeah. maybe that's why I only got that toy. And then the last toy line, which uh, sort, of, sort of dovetails into my, my favorite nostalgia thing ever uh, growing up, was the Robotech line from, from yeah. M- Matchbox. Now, I hated the action figures. Because you know those were worse than the Panache Place ones, but <laughs> but the you know they licensed a bunch of the transforming robots, which is yeah. in- interesting because Hasbro got the the rights to do Jetfire, which was yeah you know, with the robot the, had the whole yeah. lawsuit over that. So yeah, it was a whole mess. But yeah. when when I was younger in sixth grade, I I'll hold this up right here. I got uh, Matchbox did like these super deformed versions of them. So yep. um, I remember wanting this toy for Christmas. Can you see this, Jared? He's adjusting. Oh, thank you very much. So there we go. Um, yeah, I played with this thing like crazy, and my uh, a good friend of mine had. You know, there's a couple other versions of this, so he had one, and we would sit around and play Robotech all the time. Uh, I really like that because it was it's pretty much an exact rep- re- exact replica of the Transformer one, except smaller and affordable. Um, yeah. So yeah, that tied into the cartoon. I mean, they had a lot of cartoon stuff, and since the cartoon had three different generations, you had. Um, you had toys that sort of spanned all three, all three of those cartoons, so they were, could be a lot different in design. The problem with these is they were very, very expensive, especially the the bigger robots like the SDF One yeah. and the Alpha Fighter. And it took me, boy, I think I bought uh, I bought one of the Alpha Fighters from a, a former uh, a coworker of ours from Toys R Us. And I think even in the late '90s, I paid seventy five dollars for that, which was a lot of money back then. Yeah. Um. But you know, since then they've released a lot of. Uh, uh, not vintage style Robotech, but realistic masterpiece like the like they did the Transformers, like the tall ones uh, yeah. that were very cartoon uh, realistic and stuff like that. But I have a lot of very positive memories about Robotech and uh, that toy line. And then soon after that, I stopped playing with toys for a number of years until I started working at Toys R Us. So, so there you and go. And you started playing with them again. And I started playing yeah. with them. Yeah, if I, if <laughs> I never would have st- started working at Toys R Us, I probably would not be sitting here having this conversation with you, Gino, and... Even have a friendship with Jared because yep. it was strange. Even when I when I first got into there, I didn't even start playing with or playing with collecting toys for a number of years. I think it took um, the the Star Wars line, like, oh my god, this is really really cool. And then Star Wars sort of dovetailed into X Men and some of these other yeah. things that I really liked. So you, you missed out on the whole terrible first series of X Men figures. Well, I have all those. The, the first series, they're garbage. Yeah, they're they're not good. <laughs> we we actually might have a question about that oh, later. All so. Right. So there we go. Uh, so before we let you go, Gino, I've been threatening you with this for months. Um, sure. We do something here called the Nerd Degree. Oh, boy. <laughs> can you tell the difference between Wookiees and Klingons? Yes, you can. I know you can, Gino. I hope so. Do you still live in your parents' basement after 33 years and you like it? We recorded this bit when can being a nerd was less Windows cool. Windows and Linux? in a dual boot configuration without breaking a sweat. Is that so current, Jared? We'll find out how sure. big of a geek you are when we give you the nerd degree. We're very current when we have Perry Mason music. I mean, <laughs> you may not... <laughs> How can you forget Perry Mason? Uh, well, you'd be amazed. So we're calling this the Nerd Degree Retro Toy Edition. I've got 10 questions for you, which I'm just going to warn you ahead of time. Uh, it's a little, maybe a little bit more 80s than 90s. I should have thought of that. But, uh, you know, you're, right. you're in the business. I'll do my best. So you should, know, you should know the majority of these questions. Some of these things you still sell. So let's get with it. So 
this is I, this is a, sort of a trick question because you don't do a lot of girl toys at uh, Nerd Rage Toys. No, not too too many. But we got a couple of girl related questions. Sure. Whose signature was found on the backside of Cabbage Patch dolls? Oh boy! It's the creator no, of Cabbage Patch. I don't know the name. I remember seeing that the little decree on the back of there that gives you the origin story of the Cabbage Patch, but I don't remember the, whole the deal. signature. Jared, can yeah. you answer that question? I believe it's Xavier Roberts. That is correct. Thank you. All right. Not that we're competing, but okay, Gino. This is what I do remember. This is one you may know. Okay. Kenner Toys, creator of the famous Star Wars toy line, you might have heard of it. <laughs> sure. Was originally owned by what huge food producing company? Oh. Oh. Wow. I had no idea they were even and that, owned and, by a food company. And that's a Minnesota connection, believe it or not. We love Minnesota here because you know we're, we're into our own thing. But yes, they were owned by a. <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're already buzzer buzzing. On that one. I'll take the buzzer on that one. <laughs> the answer is General Mills. General oh, Mills really? owned Kenner for a while, and then they eventually that sold to Hasbro. Makes a lot of sense since most of their mail aways were from General Mills cereal. There you go. It all ties together. Go. That made no yeah. sense to me as a kid. Why is there a General Mills logo on this packaging for a Star Wars toy? There it was. I don't get it. Okay, here's one. If you don't know, I'm turning off your Skype account right now. <laughs> okay. And this ties into probably the biggest uh, the biggest movie in the country right now, Transformers, mm -hmm. which is terrible, by the way. One of the worst movies I've ever seen. Counting. Well, I have, I've been reluctant to watch your review. I haven't seen the movie yet. Oh, it's devastating. Our review is great. You've got to check that out. Check it out on YouTube. It's I'm, on track for over $100 million this weekend. So our review, Reviews be damned. I thought our review, uh, people are going to be watching our review, $100 million views. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. Okay. New YouTube superstars. Gino, counting Grimlock, there were five original Dinobots. Name, yep. name three others. I'm not going to make you name the other four, but if you can name three out of four, you're in business. Jeez. Now you put me on the spot. <laughs> you know, there was... There was the Pterodactyl. There was the, the Triceratops. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. I, I there was the Stegosaurus. I can't remember their names oh now that you put me on the spot. Get you're out of bit. We're we're, we're you, shutting you, your we're you, shutting your you business can shut down, off my Gino. Feed. You can shut off my feed. <laughs> okay, they're all S. They're all S names. Jared, you want to give it a shot? I know there's Swoop. Swoop is one. Swoop. Yes. There's there Snarl. Snarl is one. Snarl. Is there a Slag? Yes, there's a Slag. And the, the fourth one's an S as well. Yes. Ooh, that one I don't know. Sludge. 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 I thought there was only three initially, and then they added two more. But mm, doesn't matter. I, you know what? Doesn't matter. I think that I think that swoop was added. Okay, but whatever. I'm who, impressed. I remember those. Who cares? <laughs> who cares? This is devastating, Gino. This is devastating. Ah, yeah. Okay, here's one that I'm not even going to say. I'm not even pretending you're going to get this right, but sure. we're going to try anyway. <laughs> in, right. in the three and three quarter GI Joe toy line, yep. what was the first mail away figure? First mail away, I believe, was Cobra Commander or Duke. I think it was Cobra Commander that came before Duke. I don't know. That, those are our armed forces coming in to take you up. <laughs> but I, I also think I think that uh, uh, Major Blood was mail away as well when he first came out. You really you're thinking hard. I like your thought process. You got to pick one though. Uh, I'll go with Cobra Commander. Probably wrong. Jared, I don't know actually. Give him a correct ding. It's correct. Wow. The right. the awesome. battle masks Cobra Commander was first. I believe Duke was second. Yeah. Uh, I remember getting Duke. Um, I I think uh, for I think it was like 1983. I got a uh, the the helicopter. What was that called? The Dragonfly helicopter. Yeah. Sure. And they had a mail away for Duke. And at that time, the only mention of Duke was in the 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 uh, cartoon, like the 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 yeah. five part series. So that it actually predated him being on the cartoon as a regular. So that was kind of cool. Neat. Um, here's one that you're probably not going to get right, but oh well. <laughs> who was who was Teddy Ruxpin's sidekick? There was a the, he had a psychic that plugged into him that could also yeah, be the, interactive. The, the worm. Yep, he was a uh, worm. What the heck was the worm's name? There was the worm and the scientist guy. Yep. I, I can't remember the worm's name. This is a tough one. I don't I don't know either. He was he was orange. Yeah, I can't write or, Orangey the worm. Orangey the worm. That sounds right. Uh if you if you go off of the idea of worm, his name was Grubby. Grubby, oh, Grubby right. the worm. I never had a Teddy Rock spin. Never had one. No. Here's one that if you if you don't know, uh, push your entire uh, pegged wall of action figures over. <laughs> All right. What does Fair what does mask stand for? 
mask was uh jeez you put me on the book you put me on the spot and everything goes blank on me it was it was like mobile armored strike command or something like correct that. command with there a k go. with a k yeah. okay so jared everybody knows that keith was the leader of yes. the voltron lion force uh-huh but who was the leader of the voltron vehicle force oh boy I'll be honest with you, I never watched that one because I could not stand the vehicle-looking robot, oh. uh, Voltron. You like his pointy head? Even though he came first, uh, the anime version, he actually came before the, the cats. Uh, I couldn't stand the look of it, so oh. I never watched it, so oh. I'm going to take a, a pass on this one. The correct answer is Jeff. Jeff? Jeff, yes. Jeff. Jeff. Jeff is Commander Jeff. Commander Jeff. All right, Jared doesn't buy it. I'm telling <laughs> I don't you. remember that. That seems wrong. But yeah, that's I why. loved. I when I was a kid, I I did not really like the vehicles, but as I got older, I sort of liked the idea of them. Um, I was I was I was fascinated with it because I saw the lion show first, and it sort of wrapped up, and then like suddenly there was this vehicle force. Yeah, and like what is this? What is this? Yeah. It's a whole new Voltron. And then yeah, I saw it's funny because the... that actually came first, but in yeah. the states they played the cat one first, and then you get used to that, and then. You know, it goes to form Voltron, and like six hundred vehicles are yeah. coming out of nowhere, and you don't know what's happening. And, and you've got you've got uh, cars for feet flying through space. It doesn't really make a yeah. lot of sense. And you had like so the vehicle one was like Voltron one, and like I think the line one was Voltron three or something. Yeah. And then and they, there was like a mystery Voltron two in the middle, which I only ever saw on the side of the box on the toys. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. they they released them as toys. They never were released here as, as it was never a cartoon. It was here. weird. It was like three robots that combined into one big robot yeah. with a bunch of arms. I did research on it. I can't remember. It's called like Gaius or something like sure. that. I don't remember. Anyway. But, hey, we're, we're out getting off track. We've got to see... Uh, oh, we're talking Voltron. We've got to see Gino flounder here with my impossible <laughs> questions. Here we go. It's okay. Number eight. What was the name of the Silverhawk spaceship and who was its pilot? Oh. Jeez, you no, I've actually been trying to buy this one too. You sold you. I have seen you sell the the hmm. pilot on your website. Uh, it all goes blank when you get put on the spot here. <laughs> Tell but, me about uh, it. I can't remember the the vehicle's name. I've been trying to buy it for a long time too. It's a have... it's a cool vehicle because you can actually have five characters in each of the different uh, cockpits. Jared, yeah. do you want to do you want to wager a guess? I don't remember the name. Didn't I, I didn't I buy you a Silver Hawks for your birthday? A, uh, a DVD at I think one so. point? That doesn't thanks mean for anything. Thanks for paying attention, Jared. Um, <laughs> the spaceship was called the Mirage. That's it. It was? And the character who uh, piloted it was a guitar-playing Silver Hawk mm -hmm. called Bluegrass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was a sort of a cowboy. Yep. And his, yeah. his uh, guitar turned into his, uh, his uh, friendly hawk companion. So there you go. Not a great cartoon, by the way. Not a great cartoon. Number nine. This is this is one you get. What is the only three and three quarter GI Joe figure to not have movable leg joints? Not have movable Ooh, leg joints. I know this one. Mm hmm. It's on your website. <laughs> Jeez. You just do quick perfect search. sense. I'm Make sure you perfect. have it categorized by movability, right? Yeah, that's perfect how I sense that I wouldn't know it then. Yep, you should know this. Oh boy. I'm in trouble here. I never. No one's, gonna, no one's gonna buy from me again now. Oh, Jeez. they will. Well, <laughs> luckily nobody listens to our show, so you're safe. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, I have no idea. Jared, let me get let let's pass it over to you. You're an expert in GI Joe. I'm gonna guess Deep Six. You are correct. Oh, Deep Six and his giant submersible suit. Yep. I never yeah, had that. Make, make, it's not. It's not a great figure. No, <laughs> it's not. It's not. No. But when you're 10 years old, or when you were, for you, Gino, when you were one year old, it might be the best toy he, ever. He you can never put know. the toy underwater, as demonstrated in the commercials. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Gino, I want you to grab that X Men action figure behind you. Okay. And this is going to inspire you, because this is an X Men Toy Biz related question. Sure. In the first series of Toy Biz X Men action figures, who was the lone female and difficult to find figure released? I I believe it was Storm. Jared? I don't I don't know the line that well. Yes, it was Storm. It was yeah, Storm. She had the black costume on. Yeah, with the little yeah. little plastic. Sounds right. Yeah. So I'm gonna give you a bonus Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle question. I just thought okay. of this right now. Ooh. That's how much since you are a big TMNT fan. This will be his bailiwick. Uh Jared might know this as well. Um in the I'm gonna say within the first three lines. Uh, Playmates released three 
TMNT figures that were from other independent comic books. Can you name those action figures? Uh, you had Fugitoid. Correct. One. Um, Usagi Ojimbo. Correct. Two. And the third one. This is a tough one. Yeah, the third one. <laughs> the third one's got me puzzled there. Jared, you want to help out? No. Nope. You're his lifeline. I only knew the one. Which one did you know? Usagi, Usagi Ojimbo. The third one. Uh, I think I have that one. Was PandaCon. Oh, that I did Panda not know. Huh, okay. He was, uh, yeah, from a, a, a small little, I think it might even be a black and white comic. Nobody cares. Everybody likes Fugitoid. Everybody likes Usagi Ojimbo. By far yeah. the most famous of the bunch. The so. only ones that really matter. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Gino, we have run uh, through everything. I have nothing more to offer other than you have been a fantastic guest. Uh, Nerd Rage Toys is a great website. Don't judge me on my knowledge. No. He gives you this guy gives you good deals. He doesn't rip you off. Um, he cares about his toys. We think he does. He doesn't know a lot about them clearly, but uh, yeah, I what no he does idea sell, what he gets selling. That's why it's so cheap. I, yeah, I'll offer them to you at a fair price. Though. There we go. For people who are looking for uh, a fair value in toys, where can people find you? Uh, check me out, nerdragetoys.com. Just go to Google, type in Nerd Rage Toys. We have both a website, and if you don't trust the website, you can go to eBay. We are also on there. There you go. Excellent. Very good, Jared and Gino. I'm sure you'll have much to talk about at a later date. Jared's got boxes of toys at his feet right now that he I'm gonna, cannot... I'm going to take inventory and get a hold of you, because I have some stuff you sure. may be interested in. All right. Hey, since I have no knowledge of what anything is, apparently, you could even rip me off <laughs> That's and true. tell me it's really rare. I'll just and come I'll in and like, it. I saw this sold at auction for $230,000. Yes. What Done. are you going to give me? Monkey face, Princess Leia. There we go. <laughs> All right, Gino. Thank you very much. Uh, come back on our show anytime. We talk of retro and vintage and uh, old school stuff, 80s and 90s all the time. So That's Good. I could talk all day about toys and movies. So all I'd right. love to come back. Perfect. Well, we'll, we'll definitely have you. So uh, we'll uh, cut this off. We'll be back with uh, more scope right after this. You're listening. You're listening. You're listening to the scope. Under the, under the scope. Hey, scope super fans. We are wake back. up, Shane. Wake up. I know that was a long interview, but oh my you gotta God. wake up. Uh, Gino, we can't shut that guy up. <laughs> <laughs> We're back with uh, the scope and uh, more specifically, coming soon. <laughs> with Adam gone, it falls to us. We have to take over, which this could be uh, could be terrible. Or it could be great. Or it could, it could be, be the dawning of a new era. Yeah, we, we we might realize we don't need Adam. So, Jared, let's let's see. You're All taking right. over. Coming soon in the uh, the world of music, uh, out July fifteenth, July, mid July already. It's disgusting. Summer is whizzing by. It's gone. I'm okay because I don't care about uh, I don't care about summer. You have uh, Ace Frehley, famous guitarist of Kiss, has a solo album. Yes, he the does. The title is Space Invader. Hmm. Very very uh, much on the the tip of. Popular culture, mm-hmm. Space Invader. Morrissey, another mm-hmm. relic of the past. You might know him from the Smiths. World Peace is None of Your Business. That's the name of the album. It's only Morrissey's business. Uh, Richard Reed Perry. I have a note here of Arcade Fire. Is he in Arcade Fire? Sure, why not? These are all artists, uh, apparently, who are associated with other bands as well. Interesting. Uh, the album is Music for Heart and Breath. That is weird. Did you know that, Jared? Oh, that was very weird. <laughs> Wait, why am I doing Carson? I gotta be, uh, yeah. There's <laughs> Morrissey from, from from the Smiths. <laughs> you are correct, sir. We can do this all day long. Adam hates I know. Our He's like, he can't, he can't look down his nose at us here. <laughs> awesome. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. The band Rise Against has a new album called The Black Market. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Mother Hips have an album, Chronicle Man. I'm not familiar with The Mother Hips. Can you tell me anything I, about I them? I think The Mother Hips, uh, I just recognize them from Rock Band. Okay. And uh, trampled by turtles. Are they they're are they local. They are local. They are band, local to uh, the Twin Cities area. Uh, wild animals is the album. Uh, wild. What do you think about animals. trampled by turtles? I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not a huge fan. Yeah, it's a little a little low key. A little me. too low key, sleepy. But uh, I appreciate what they do. People like. I them. have friends that like trampled by turtles, and um, I'm okay with that. They've probably pre-ordered. Probably. Uh, movies July 18th. Planes, fire and rescue. Why they keep Sequel doing to planes? Why they keep doing spinoffs of cars? I do not understand. Other than it's a money making machine. But this, yeah, and this is a Disney property. That's not a Pixar. Yeah. Although the distinction is almost moot at this point. Some might say it's blurry. Yeah. 
uh, it's blurry. Sex Tape comes out. Is that that's the one with uh, uh, Jason Segel and uh, who else? Cameron Diaz. Cameron Diaz. And The Purge Anarchy, sequel to the surprised, uh, I guess, horror yep. uh, hit from last early last summer, The Purge. They turn More this around the quickly. Yeah, well, you know, you got to strike with the iron's hot. Exactly. DVD and Blu-ray, Shane. July 15th, we've got Clue. This is the original Clue. This is the John Cleese this Clue. This is the original Clue. And, uh, or, a re-release in some sort. I'm sure it's some sort of anniversary or okay. something Does like that. Does it have all the endings? They always do. Will it randomly select one? That's a good question. Hmm. I think we've come to the technology point where they can do that. Sure. On Blu-ray, maybe. I saw Clue in the movie theater, by the way. I did not. And I did, it went completely over my head. I did not get it at all. It There's a lot young. of adult-type humor in there. Yeah. Not, not not necessarily like, you know, sexy-type adult, mm-hmm. but just sophisticated. You kind of need to have some sort of worldly experiences to uh, understand the jokes. So I still would not understand it. Probably not. Uh, Criterion Edition Scanners mm-hmm. for you classic horror thriller fans. Don't care. Next. Under the Skin. Which one is this? I don't know. I put it in there. The skin. It, is this, I feel like this is, uh, what's her name? Scarlett Johansson. Yes, that is correct. Okay. That is correct. Where is my, uh, where's my thing? Switch over. Points for me. All right. Very nice. <laughs> uh, video game, Shane. Not a lot. It's kind quiet. of a quiet, kind video, of a quiet summer. For, video games right. will be quiet till August. Yep. Uh, the week of July 13th, we have Saints Row the 4th National Treasure Edition for PS3 and Xbox 360. Saints, Saints Row is, uh, the last couple Saints Row have been a lot of fun. Surprisingly fun. So what, what makes this one special? Because this so, is a game that's been out. This is one where they, they give you all the added extras, okay. all the DLC. And uh, Saints Row 4 is almost like the Matrix. So aliens come in and uh, take over the the Saints Row world. And you're sort of playing yep. in a super powered Matrix version of Saints Row. Sounds cool. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. It's that's fun. it for coming soon, Jane. All right. Oh, but is it? Is it? Hit it or miss it. Hit up the week. Hit it or miss it. Miss up the week. Look out. Jared? Yes. It falls to you. It does. Hit it or miss it. Hit it or miss it. This week, I am going to pick a hit. And that hit is the brand new album from Weird Al Yankovic entitled mandatory fun you are so predictable there's been a lot of uh, uh online promotion for this recently he's been releasing video game or video clips uh and it's very much sort of playing off of the uh you know communist propaganda type uh, imagery gotcha mandatory fun Check comes out, out july 15th record stores everywhere get to your record stores enjoy start the line yes all right under, under, under the scope. Guess this back half of the show is all Jared. Uh, this is the time in which we relay comments from our listeners. Jared, is there anything to relay this time around? Uh, we had a down cycle. Not a lot of comments. Yeah, this time people around. are busy. It's summertime, Jared. It is. They can't be bothered to comment on our show. Yeah. We did a big interview with Ron Boogie Monster Gerber, two parter. Surely some of you had some interesting insights. Yeah, what are you people? Are you insane? It was a great interview. It was. There was some back and forth on actually in the Facebook group um, on the things, but it was sort of the sort of kind of in the moment. It's not a, not sort of comments that really play well uh, out of context when you're reading them. In I a didn't show. see that. I got to look up that. Yeah. And wrote some stuff. And uh, there was someone commenting on uh, what was popular in 84 in kind of the New England area. Mm, OK, um, I'll check. But out. out of context, it doesn't make a lot of sense so i elected not to read them here okay well so it's not like it's uh, a complete we're not devoid of of comments i just did not uh did not select any for mass consumption fair enough there you go so if people do want to comment jared what do they need to do well they uh they need to get out their uh stationery and their finest pen and they need to write it down on a piece of paper and they need to put it in a fancy envelope yep. and seal it with a wax seal i was gonna say wax seal yeah that's, that's a, how you know it's that's a mark of quality. It's so you know it's not tampered with. Exactly. You know exactly. The NSA. Look, if you're a king and you're writing decrees, you can't have them if if they're going to pass through messengers' hands. You need some sort of way to mark their authenticity and know that they've not been tampered. Exactly. With. And that's where the wax seal comes into place. Uh, it's too bad we don't have a PO box, uh, so you're just going to have to sit on that letter until we do, like a little time capsule of your co- correspondence to us. <laughs> If you're not interested in that sort of communication, you can uh, email us, comments at thescopeshow.com. You can call our voicemail line, 612-21-SCOPE. That's 612-217-2673. Yes. You can also reach out to us on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr. All those links are on our website at thescopeshow.com. Or if you're watching us on YouTube, you can comment right below, mm-hmm. right down there. And you can find you can also find Adam on Grinder. 
Yes. He's on Grinder. He's he as you know, he's gone missing. He's gone. You can rogue. only assume that he's he had uh, a, a roster of grinder contacts that he was going to hook up with while he was away. I'm you can only assume. Song. I mean I'm, I don't want to say that he's doing that, but all evidence to the contrary doesn't exist, so we have to go with the worst assumptions. Uh, I feel like what we do here, you can support us financially by signing up with Patreon. Patreon is the service that allows you to support content creators directly. Uh, you can sign up for as little as $1 an episode. You can set a monthly cap and you can cancel anytime. Anytime. Patreon.com slash The Scope Show. Again, all those links at the show.com website. Back to you. Thank you very much, Jared. I want to thank Gino from Nerd Rage Toys. I uh, did a great job. Good times. Check out his if you're interested in any sort of retro toy or new toys. He does do new toys as well. Make sure you go to Nerd Rage Toys first. If you want to buy any of Jared's Power Ranger collection, <laughs> any of his X Men collection, you know where to find I've got him. Ninja Turtles. I've got Star Trek: The Next Generation. He's got it all. Cadillacs and dinosaurs, as I mentioned. It, cat, I mean, I we're, I'm already getting emails just Aliens. by you saying that. Wow, that's amazing. From the future. From the future. There. I like it. So, uh, and Adam, hopefully he will be back with us next show. We can only hope that he'll have some sort of new appendage. Maybe he had some sort of elective surgery to add a tail. Who knows? Well, we'll find out in a couple weeks. So, Jared, spin the ending music. Once again, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. We'll be back in a few weeks with more scope. See you soon. Ladies and gentlemen, we find ourselves once again at the end. I hope you've enjoyed our time together. I know I have. Fear not, Scope Faithful. Days shall pass as if they were but a moment. And Jared, Adam, and Shane will return with another thrilling episode. Until then, send your comments to comments at thescopeshow.com or leave a voicemail message by dialing 612-21-SCOPE. That's 612-217-2673. Thanks for listening, faithful fans. This is Tony Partington saying au revoir. Tune in next time to another terrific edition of The Scope. The Scope.